you are listening to episode 21 of the EU Startups Podcast. Today with the EIT Health InnoStars Awards winner Tuli, a Romanian startup which helps children manage their emotions. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the EU Startups Podcast. As mentioned before, next week we're finally hosting the very first edition of the Future Travel Summit. If you are interested in travel startups and travel industry trends, I would suggest you go on futuretravel.com right now and secure your ticket immediately. While this is the very first edition and will be held as an online event, next year's edition will be in person. Also, our annual flagship event, the EU Startup Summit, will be back as an in-person event in 2022, gathering over 1,500 of Europe's coolest founders and investors on May 12 and 13 in beautiful Barcelona. Tickets are now available and we're already looking forward to meeting many of you in person again next year. And now, without further ado, let's jump right into today's interview. So today I'm excited to be joined by Marius Rus, the co-founder and CEO of Tuli, a Romanian startup which helps children manage their emotions. Marius, welcome to the EU Startups Podcast and thank you so much for taking the time. Hi, thank you for, uh, for having me. Sure. Um, so Marius, um, let's start at the very beginning. Um, how did you and your co-founders come up with the idea for Tuli? Uh, so it's been, uh, it's been quite a, a, long, uh, a long history. It actually started from uh, from working directly with children that needed help uh, dealing with with their emotions and their their behavior. Adina, who is both my wife and and my co-founder, one of my co-founders, uh, worked with children like that as a as a volunteer in for several years in in the U.S. while I was doing my uh, my MBA, mm-hmm. and. Uh, she gradually started to to know what to do to uh, to to learn them because uh, she's uh, her I don't know her her basic uh, uh, background is uh, is also economics like mine. She's uh, she's a professor at uh, at the university here in in Cluj, but mm-hmm. now she's also a psychologist. So she she liked to to help children so much, and she found it so rewarding that. She went through the the faculty of psychology. She she got a master's in uh, in uh, behavior psychology, and uh, she's uh, she's now working also with uh, with children like that. And uh, uh, I was it was some time after after starting working with these children. Uh, uh, she went through all of these uh, while after we returned uh, from from the US, and I was working with uh, with startups, helping them. Um, reach out to investors, get uh, get funding, and uh, improve their uh, strategy, their uh, go to market, their launch uh, plans. So everything around that part. Mm-hmm. While she was doing her, uh, she was preparing her dissertation for the for the masters in uh, in child development. And uh, I don't I don't know exactly how we got to this, but. One evening we were discussing about uh, uh, about the psychology side. She she just uh, worked with uh, with a child that was diagnosed with ADHD and needed help on uh, on keeping things under control. And we just realized during the the conversation that this is something that the working with the children, helping them acknowledge and empowering them to to control their their uh, behavior does not have to be constricted by the available number of of, uh, uh, specialists, counselor, and it might be possible to to replicate that uh, with an electronic device. I think one uh, one of the the things that kind of led us towards that direction was... uh, uh, was another electronic device that was being launched at that time, uh, a device for tracking uh, sleep for very, uh, for very little babies, for, uh, for very small babies, and uh, allowing chill, uh, parents to have peace of mind about the fact that, yes, the baby is still breathing, you don't have to go wake him up 
to mm-hmm. see if, if that everything's all, all right. Mm-hmm. So I think we kind of put two and two together and we, we, we thought, let's, let's see if it's possible first. Mm-hmm. Exciting. And, okay. uh, and that's, that's what started it. Mm-hmm. And for everyone who's not familiar with the concept yet, um, how um, does the Tully device uh, work? Like what's the technology behind it? Uh, sure. So basically it's a wearable device. It's a bracelet at this moment that tracks a series of biological indicators, series of, uh, uh, of biomarkers from uh, skin temperature and skin conductivity to heart rate to uh, oxygen uh, level in blood and a, series, and a, a bunch of other aspects like movement and speed of movement. And we use all of those to, uh, to detect the overall level of, uh, of agitation uh, mm-hmm. of, uh, of the wearer, which in this case, it's, uh, so our initial focus is only for children uh, that are uh, hyperactive. So are either diagnosed with ADHD or not, but they are still tackling with, uh, with, the, tackling with, the, with those issues about mm-hmm. uh, getting things under control and avoiding, uh, avoiding uh, high intensity emotional events. So out of uh, determining the, the overall level of agitation, um, our, the algorithm behind the, the device can forecast uh, with really uh, great precision uh, the way uh, the, the potential onset of an, of an high intensity emotional event. And this is when these children need help because it's not very difficult for them mm-hmm. to learn how to control themselves because it's it's simple uh, techniques, it's simple, I don't know, relaxation or uh, respiration uh, methods. But what where they do need all their help they can get is to get some kind of external input because otherwise they do not realize that they are getting more and more stressed, more and more agitated until mm-hmm. the moment that everything uh, cracks around them. And at that point, it's too too late to do something about it. So what we are doing is just providing initially this part, uh, an early warning for uh, high intensity emotional events. And then we are using the, the feedback from, uh, from the device to also guide them through the series of, uh, of exercises that they already know. So we are not, <coughs> at least not now, we are not teaching them uh, what they have to do to, to calm themselves. We, mm-hmm. we leave that to, to the psychologist, but we can indicate how, where they are on the road towards back towards a, a calm state. Uh, mm-hmm. So these are the main two, uh, two aspects that, that the device is doing. And also, of course, everything around data is, is collected, this process, and it can be made available for, uh, to the psychologist. So in this case, it improves the, the objectivity of, of uh, therapy evaluation, and it also lets them greatly improve the, the therapeutic process. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And um, you are tackling a very big and important uh, issue there with the Natoli product. And um, I was wondering, who do you see as your direct competitor and what differentiates Tully from uh, alternative uh, options that target this problem? At this moment, unfortunately, I, uh, there are no necessarily direct competitors that are doing things the same way as, as we are. So mm-hmm. there are a series of... Um, of wearables that are also monitoring in one way or another the emotion, but none of them is focused on, uh, it's, it's more on, on the wellness aspect. So none of them is focused on, uh, on mental uh, conditions and absolutely zero of them uh, are, uh, are tackling ADHD. And mm-hmm. on the same time, there, is, uh, there are also at least one, maybe two uh, devices that are destined to uh, to help children or people with with ADHD but children are the ones that they need more help, more help uh, but they do not in n- do not use uh, data so it's just all sorts of, of mechanics either uh, random vibration or based on I don't know weight and stuff like that mm-hmm. but it's not personalized it doesn't it does not do anything to adapt the, the reactions to to whatever happens with uh, with the wear in in uh, in real time. Uh, mm-hmm. What we actually are trying to do is basically add a new, not necessarily replace, because we are only offering a sliver of uh, of uh, of the entire benefits that uh, that you get from from uh, working with uh, with a specialized counselor, but making 
the real time real time impact of a of a specialized counselor available for every child that might need one mm -hmm. okay and truly just won the InnoStars awards congratulations on that marius and Thank before you. that um and before that um you also participated in the eit health ris innovation program what was your experience uh participating in that program and then later to win the InnoStars awards Uh, both of them were extremely helpful for us. So basically, the first one, the RES uh, program, helped us validate our technology. We worked together with, uh, with the Cluj Faculty of Psychology in that project, and mm -hmm. we ran all the steps that were needed to, to demonstrate that what we are tracking, what we are measuring, actually has a very direct correspondent in the agitation level, and there is a high correlation Between, uh, between the indicators that, that we get, the algorithms and the, uh, the agitation score that we calculate based on our algorithm and the behavior, the observable behavior of, uh, of the children. And also uh, the, same, uh, the same project helped us uh, show the potential of the intervention. We only took it one step at a time at, at that point in, in uh, last year when we had that, uh, that first project. So that was the, the RES uh, program, which, as I said, was, was the one that helped us uh, find a complete, a, a fully functional prototype. Based on that, we continued uh, this year outside of, uh, of the EIT with, <coughs> with follow-on experiments and follow-on testing and follow-on development. We actually reached the, uh, the commercial version, the final version of the, of the device in I don't know, earlier in last month, in, in October. And in the same time, we have been working in this, uh, you know, Stars Awards program, which again was, I found it extremely helpful from the perspective of strengthening uh, the way that we present ourselves, the way that we, uh, we built the, the business plan and, uh, and everything around it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you just mentioned several steps along the way uh, of Tully, and you're still rather early stage uh, in, in the history of the company. But what were your biggest challenges uh, so far since starting Tully, and how did you overcome those challenges? To be honest, it's been, it's been basically challenge after challenge because hardware is hard. I, I've been working with startups for, uh, for a lot of time, but, uh, but this was the first one doing uh, doing hardware so mm -hmm. it was there were a lot of uh, a lot of aspects that uh, we were not expecting or we were expecting but only on a theoretical level so one thing is that everything takes much longer than it than it uh, would take if you were only doing software if you mm -hmm. have uh, the ability to debug because you have to actually dig in the uh, the equipment see what's wrong adapt Uh, modify and uh, and whatnot. So it took us longer because we were uh, we were bootstrapped for uh, for the longest time of uh, of our history. Again, it the entire development was uh, was slower. I would say that probably in the I don't know in the recent a couple of years, uh, the biggest challenges were around finding the ways to uh, to work with the users because again this is a a device that needs. Uh, direct interaction with users, with psychologists, with children, with parents in order to be able to develop it and to, to be able to, uh, to have a functional version. And uh, the entire uh, corona pandemic uh, was, not, uh, was not the best uh, mm -hmm. uh, environment in which to, uh, to try to work directly one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with children. Or, mm -hmm. uh, or to observe them in school. Uh, to be honest, for instance, the, even on the, when we started the, the, the RIS program, uh, we were planning, or at least we were hoping to be able to put it one step further and also test the interaction. So be able to observe the children in a real life situation during school. And of course, last year, everything was, uh, was in lockdown. So this was something that was completely out of the question. So we focused more on, uh, on analyzing the, uh, the first part, the detection part, uh, and, uh, and we left the interaction for uh, the intervention for this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it worked. And uh, 
I don't know. Another another point maybe that that can be qualified while as a, as a challenge, but it's not mm-hmm. something unsurmountable during this year was uh, generated by the by the chip crisis that everybody's mm-hmm. talking about, and actually we uh, we experienced it. It it took us I don't know more than a month, close to two months, which can be translated in forever in in startup terms <laughs> to. To get the the microcontrollers that we need, and to uh, to get all the parts in order to 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 build the the prototypes, and we were expecting them within a week from ordering. So mm-hmm. there was a huge <laughs> delay of that. Yeah, I see. Good. And what are the next steps uh, and milestones for Tuli? And are you currently looking to raise funding? Uh, yeah, so we have uh, we have next steps on two two different directions that uh, that are actually connected uh, one is we are working towards uh, towards a, a commercial launch we will have the launch uh, during december mm-hmm. through a crowdfunding campaign uh, and we will launch the device as a consumer electronic device so uh, we will be focusing on uh, on the parents of uh, of children uh, that need help the children that uh, that uh, uh, exhibit uh, hyperactive uh, uh, behavior and as I said, this this will happen uh, in December. Uh, so early next year, we'll start working towards manufacturer preparation, um, looking to to get reliable uh, reliable suppliers. Hoping that this uh, this entire crisis of, of chips is uh, uh, is is getting better. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are planning to have it fully commercially on the market in the first half of next year. Uh, mm-hmm. In the same time. Uh, also next year we we are planning to start the steps towards um, towards uh, the certifying a tooly as a medical device that would mm-hmm. allow it to allow it to be included in the healthcare reimbursement schemes so mm-hmm. to be paid by uh, by insurance companies but in order to do that uh, we need to go through clinical trials we need to to go through uh, certifications and we need to, to be included, to be uh, accepted by national uh, healthcare organizations as a, I don't know, as a reliable source and a reliable solution for, mm-hmm. for the specific problem. And we have we already started work, uh, talking with, uh, with hospitals and uh, uh, pot- potential partners in, uh, uh, in this space. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, as I said, we, we're planning to start it next year and it, it will probably take about a year to get all the way to getting the medical device certification and being able to have the medical version of Thule available in hospitals or in pediatric clinics. Mm-hmm. And uh, to answer your second questions, we are uh, planning uh, to, to fundraise and mm-hmm. we have, we'll start officially the, uh, the campaign Immediately once we're done with uh, uh, with the crowdfunding campaign, because mm-hmm. we want to to know on one hand what we actually need in in funding, depending on the uh, <coughs> on the amount of pre sales that we get in the campaign, things might, uh, might could change, and of course the uh, the entire I don't know financial need will 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 de- depend on the uh, on the volume of uh, of devices that we need to to deliver. And in the same time, it will help uh, decrease the risk of uh, the risk for investors, the potential risk for investors, because we already have shown whether or not the market wants the product and the the users are willing to to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. All right. And where do you see Tuli in about four to five years from now in terms of company size and impact? Like how big can this get? What do you think? I mean, it could get uh, very big because the mm-hmm. same uh, the same principles behind this solution apply to every kind of sensor integration disorder. So wherever you have something that uh, induces a difficulty in uh, uh, in I don't know managing emotions and uh, and managing uh, reactions to emotions, be that recognizing mm-hmm. emotions or uh, or controlling behavior. Our solution can work. Of course, we'll have to adapt it because at this moment, or the entire algorithm and the detection phase is angled towards the uh, towards detecting the specific 
progress in uh, in ADHD cases, mm-hmm. but uh, it would work pretty similarly in I don't know uh, PTSD in uh, uh, B, uh, in bipolar disorders uh, mm-hmm. in panic attacks and potentially it can be applied even to uh, to much wider areas like I don't know anxiety or depression. Uh, mm-hmm. But there's a there's a long way to go to there, and a lot of a lot of research that needs to be uh, to be done. But yeah, I mean, as I said, it can get very big. Mm-hmm. It's only awesome. up to us to do it like that. Perfect, perfect. Then, congratulations, uh, Marius, for what you have achieved so far. Um, those were my questions. Um, thank you very much for taking the time, and I wish you continued uh, success and good luck uh, with the journey of Tuli. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.